Look You Measure continues its season on the road. Hello everyone, I'm your host Jen Mueller. Joining me today is a guy who might not be as comfortable in the kitchen as he is on the mound. He is a starting pitcher for the Seattle Mariners, Brian Wu. <laughs> you do or don't like being in a kitchen? Uh, I don't mind it. I don't have a ton of experience, but uh, I'm definitely willing to learn. You did tell me when I asked if you would be the guest measure, you said, let's do something that I might be able to recreate. <laughs> yeah. So I think I've got in a recipe with less than 10 ingredients in this. Perfect. You also said that you eat a lot of chicken. Yeah. So we're gonna do some chicken. Okay, perfect. I feel like we are gonna be able to hit the marks for you today. I think we'll do all right, yeah. I I'm liking what I'm seeing so far, pretty. Pretty basic. It's pretty Doesn't basic. Doesn't look like it's too too much, so I think okay. we're after a good start. The only thing I don't like about this setup is that I'm missing something in my hand. Oh boy. I'm guessing it has to do somewhere. I think that is the area that I'm kind of looking at over there because we do like to cook with wine on this show. And I found a Northwest Pinot Gris. I, we can sip on as we're cooking. It'll pair with the chicken. If okay. you would do the honors and just pour a little in those glasses. Absolutely. Do I need a bottle opener or is this good? No, you are one of the lucky ones. Do you know how to use a? Least amount of work as possible. Do you know how to use a corkscrew? Um, I wanna say yes and then I'm gonna be put on camera and then I'll get it wrong, so I'll say no. But it's all just in theory right now because all That's you had to do was twist that off. So you could tell me whatever you want to and until I actually see you do it, but I will point out you grew up in California. I did grow up in California. Yeah. I feel like wine is kind of part of. A little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, my family doesn't drink a whole lot of wine. My mom does a little bit, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, I don't know a whole lot. So I'm, I'm learning as I go. So maybe if I take a little wine knowledge out of this too. That'll okay, be, that'll be that'd okay. be great. Okay, yeah. well, let's, let's do this. Cheers, thank Cheers. you. I like it. Should be a little crisp. Yeah. Clean. Smooth. smooth. Absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, now it's time to put you to work. Oh boy. You've been in the kitchen. Are you skilled with a knife? Um. If we skilled, have to skilled is going to be a very, uh, yeah, very loose term here. Okay. Well, I can maybe. This is one of those. You're going to have to tell me what to do, and we'll we'll just kind of see as we go. Okay, yeah. I can handle this. Yeah. Here is what we are making today. We are making chicken Florentine. This recipe should come together in about 10 minutes. I enjoy doing this with fish as well, um, but you can kind of substitute your protein in. Here's what we're gonna do. I have already dredged some chicken. I'm gonna start cooking it over here. Okay. What I would love for you to do is take these shallots and this garlic and chop them fairly fine. Okay. We're also going to take a red bell pepper, okay. and I need about half of that, chopped okay. fairly fine. Okay. To your comfort level with a knife on the yeah, board. Yeah, yeah. And I can step in at it's any good, point in time and help. Good point to always bring in there. You know what I'm actually most worried about? Isn't your mom a great cook and a healthy cook? She's pretty healthy, yeah. My mom's a nutritionist. Yeah, yeah. So. see, this is actually what I most worry about. I'm most yeah, worried so. that this does not pass nutritional standards. No, I'm sure it'll be fine. She, I mean, she um, she grew up, she's got celiac. Mm. Um, so she's been gluten-free for a majority of her life. Um, so most of the meals that we had growing up were also gluten-free, um, pretty healthy. So yeah, I mean, Ever since I can remember, it's always been um, pretty healthy meals at home. And then, yeah, luckily enough, taking some of those habits on with me as I've gotten older. But um, yeah, she's put me in a good, good spot, I think, so far. So then when you were out on your own, or you were traveling playing baseball, was there like a snack that you never had at home that you would just go crazy to get a chance to have? Um, uh, I mean, at home, we have my mom's kitchen and you know everything she's got in there, and then my dad and I have our secret stashes hidden oh. around the house. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, they're not that secret. She knows about them, but like, we've got a couple spots that we, we had our snacks in. Um, yeah, it's not all healthy all the time. Oh, but. well, what are those snacks? Um, any types of stuff. My dad's a 
he travels a lot and whenever he travels, he'll go into like the frequent flyer clubs. Yeah, yeah. And he's a big just grab and put in the backpack guy. Always need so a snack. whenever he's coming yeah, home for something, whenever he comes home from a trip, I know we're gonna have plenty of stuff. Crackers, chips, cookies, yeah, you name it. But we got a couple of, do you want that more than that? Or like, no, that's very good. Fine Look at that. And also your knife skills are on point. You know to use the back. As long as you don't, yeah, as long as you don't chop your finger off. That's, that's what I Well, do. that's kind of, that was implied in the whole, <laughs> how comfortable are you with yeah. a knife situation? But you know. So is it the salty or the sweet snacks that get you most? Uh, I'm more of a salty guy. Yeah. I'll eat desserts here and there. I just can't, I don't eat like a ton in one sitting. Like I'll have a bite of something and then I'm kinda, I'm good for that. But like if I have a bag of chips or something, I'll just, I'll hammer through them. Chips and salsa are a real weakness for me. Yeah, chips and salsa, chips and guac. Um, chips and fake cheese. Really? I love ballpark cheese. I haven't gotten into a whole lot of. I love ballpark like cheese. Like queso? I mean, I love queso when I'm at a restaurant or making it, but yeah. I mean the orange fake ballpark cheese. Oh, oh like nacho cheese. I love nacho yeah, yeah, yeah. cheese. Okay. It's hard to believe that somebody who insists upon having wine with every episode of this show can <laughs> also then crush fake ballpark cheese, isn't it? Yeah. Did you ever have to call home and get a recipe like after you left? You're like, mom, what do I do? Yeah, multiple times. Well, when I went to college, the couple of weeks leading up to before going to college, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. my mom gave me like a very simple recipe book. A uh -huh. couple of things like just how to make chicken breast, chicken thighs, steak and ground beef and stuff like that. And I was definitely calling her at least every other day of like, all right, how do I do this? Is this right? <laughs> I definitely messed this up. Set off one too many smoke alarms. Um, that does cause problems. Yeah, especially in college where um, you're in one big dorm building. Right. And you got the fire department or whoever coming every right. week. Yeah, my roommates. Did they actually come to the dorm? A couple of times, yeah. Wait. You really did set off the fire alarm to the point where the yeah. fire department well, came Well, so out. the first time that I did it. I uh, like that there's more than one time. The first time that I did it, I didn't realize. Okay, the the fans in like an apartment kitchen aren't great. Right, this so is true. I didn't put the fan on the first time and then the smoke just kind of built up. And then the second time I tried to make a steak and I've always been told steak you do it really hot and yep, really fast. That's exactly right. So I did it, had the fan on and everything, still didn't go too well. And then, yeah, ever since then, I've kind of had like a little bit of a PTSD with setting off smoke alarms. <laughs> so like anytime I start to cook, uh, all the windows are open, all the fans are on. <laughs> Like uh, the door is open. If I see if I see it. like too much smoke, I'll just start grabbing a towel and, and like yeah. waving it down. But yeah, yeah. so. We're, we're getting there, but. I would have the same fear, yeah. especially if you have sprinklers in your apartment and the risk of them perhaps going off. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. would be a problem. Yeah. Not great. How am I doing so far? You're doing awesome. Do I do all of it or? Um, yeah, you know what I would do? I would do one more shallot. Okay. Yeah, you do one more shallot, then we'll get started on that. And right now we'll take a break. I Cook You Measure is brought to you by WGU. Online courses available 24 seven, plus the ability to accelerate through coursework you already know. Learn more at wgu.edu. You really are awesome with that knife. Yeah, it's more of the, the swiftness. Of... My mom's always, every time I'm cooking, no matter how long it is, like I always, when I go home, holidays and stuff, I try to ask her if I can help. But she's always like, don't cut off your finger. Move your finger this. Like, put your hand right here. And it's like, okay. She's smart. Like, she definitely doesn't want me to chop off any fingers. But, you know. Nobody should. I can't say, yeah. I mean, I can't. Mom's always going to make sure I'm safe. But. I, I might have also instructed people who have cooked alongside me to keep an eye on the knife yeah. and to move your fingers out yeah. of the way. I will tell you. Taylor Saucedo might have needed that reminder more than anybody More than else. anybody, yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't know if, I mean, I haven't lived with sauce, but from what Bryce has told me last year, he doesn't do a whole lot of cooking. 
So I, I can I can tell you he probably does none. Not yeah. I think he probably does none. But that's gonna change after I cook you measure. Yeah. That's absolutely changing. Um, we have chicken going. By the way, welcome back to the show. Brian Wu, the guest measurer today. Fantastic knife skills. We've got some chicken going in the pan. We're gonna cook this through for just a few more minutes. Then we'll make our sauce. The chicken goes back in and finishes cooking, so it is a nice one pan meal. That's gonna look very fancy. That's good. Yeah. All right. So I you've got that. that, and you can cook. That's teeny tiny. Don't mess with that. And you said half of this? Yes. Okay. So you can do it however you want to. I have varying techniques on that. And yeah. Since right. you only need half, you could technically just take the bottom. Look at, he's doing the flick at him go. We are gonna add spinach to this in just a second after it gets a little soft. Okay. Then we're gonna add kind of the cream sauce part of things. Okay. Then we will be done. All right. That is exactly where we need it to be. Yeah, it smells pretty good. Yeah, doesn't it? Okay, we're just gonna take this, and if you would just put it in there, and it's gonna cook down, so it's gonna be like, and you can just literally dump the whole bag in the there. The whole bag? Yep, because it's gonna cook down to almost nothing. And for your mom, we're getting all your greens in. Yeah. This is good. I think she would like this. Yeah, this will be great. I could just get to show her this. Yeah. She might even want you to make oh it boy. for her. I know. It looks like a lot. By the time we get done with it, there's not going to be this much. Is, is in this there. hot? No. It's no. Hot. Do you think Come I on. would let you put your hand on no, a hand burner? <laughs> what do you think I'm that's doing true. here? That's true. All right, there you go. Okay, so that's gonna cook down a little bit. And now we're gonna add the creaminess. Okay. Okay, you ready for a little measuring? Yep. Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way. Okay, so all we need is chicken broth, a little half and half, a little bit of, I use reduced fat cream cheese, and we'll put some Parmesan cheese in there as this is kind of cooking down just a little bit. So why don't you do just a little bit of measuring for me, and let's add three quarters of a cup of chicken broth. So I need three of these. And then we're obviously gonna have to have a conversation about cheese. Oh boy. I didn't know that this was such a big thing. It really is not a big thing until people started talking about it a whole lot. <laughs> it's, you have to admit, it is a little unusual. It's definitely weird and like unusual, but I think, I don't know, we just had a lot of time on our hands and conversations just go every which way in a dugout, so. Would you like to fill people it? in? Just, on, not, you just for right now, I'm just gonna have you do that because okay. I want this to cook down a little bit. Are you gonna fill people in on what's happening <laughs> with this conversation? Because I don't know that I can even do it justice. It's, I mean, I guess in like the simplest terms, we just have a ranking system in terms of service time and everybody has a label by a type of cheese, I guess. Now and see, that's the kicker. Yeah. Everybody has a ranking system based on service time. You can go and look that up. The kicker is I don't get the cheese part of this. <laughs> and if it was aged cheese, I totally would. I just don't that's, get yeah, how this happens. Complicated. I, we just, um, Louis was the oldest and had the most service time and we always just called him Big Cheese like to start the year and when we first got called can, up. Can I just, can I pause the story for just a second? Yeah. So you're a rookie and you get into the clubhouse <clears throat> and you've got an all-star in there in Luis Castillo. Yeah. Is there any hesitation at all in just starting to call this guy that you have just met Big Cheese? I mean, because what happens if he doesn't like it? A little bit, but I think when you start talking to him, you realize he's just another one of the guys. He likes having a good time and- Well, sure, you know. but you don't yeah, know that no, when you definitely. start calling him cheese. I mean, I didn't technically, Bryce started it. I, we all just kind of <laughs> piled on, but. Um, See, and now this is all making a lot more but, sense. But yeah, this Louis, I mean, Louis, obviously like everybody knew who he was and um, you know, all-star Cy Young caliber pitcher. So I didn't really, I talked to him a little bit in spring training um, last year when I was in camp, but not a whole lot, but just kind of seeing him around and how he interacted with everybody. Like you could tell that he was, he was a good guy and 
um, was willing to you know talk to to younger guys and help everybody out. So um, by the time I got called up, you know he embraced everybody that that was called up, Bryce and I, and all the younger guys. So um, I think I felt decently comfortable going into it. And then just the way that the pitching staff hangs out and just like how much time you spend together, you're just around each other a lot. And um, especially during games, days that you're not starting, like we all kind of just hang, hang out together. And yeah, you got a lot of time on your hands. So conversations can go a lot of different ways. Do I want to know what, where the other directions were? Probably not. Okay, we'll just yeah, leave that to your imagination. Can I get three tablespoons of half and half? By the way, look what happened to our spinach. Oh yeah, you were right. Not that I doubted you. I like that right? you caught yourself on that. Yeah. yeah. Three of these? Three. Yep. Okay. You could certainly use full fat on all of this, but we're trying to, I mean, we're in season. Yeah. We have to watch yeah, what we're doing. Well, we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah. Um, I'm going to need, I'll take that from you. I need a quarter cup of Parmesan, and then I need two ounces of Good cream touch. cheese. Two ounces. And have you used cream cheese before? Did you know that there's ounces that are marked on the side? I did not know that, but so there you that go. That's how you measure cream cheese. They made that just for the show. They, if I could get things made just for the show, <laughs> that's how I know. Just one of these? Yes. Of okay. course, we're going to add more to that because who doesn't love cheese? Yeah, also, true. aren't you Parmesan? I am Parmesan. Yeah. I did. I mean, it's just a happy coincidence. <laughs> it really is just a happy coincidence. Okay. So here's what I would do to make this a little easier. I apologize for the no. noise. That's I would fine. actually take this and I'd find your mark and I'd cut right, right down the middle of it and then we'll add it to the pan. Okay. This should all thicken up just a little bit. Just cut a big chunk out of the middle? Well, yeah, but line it up like against... The end. We'll line it up against here. So use the end of it. So that's going to be one that's ounce. One in here. So then if I need two ounces, just I move it two. over there. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, you can cut a big chunk out of it. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Okay. And with something like that, if it's not exactly easy enough, right? See, I definitely would not have done that if I was on my own. I don't know how I would have done it, but well, you could, that's I mean, probably not how I would have done it. Perfect. And then if you, uh huh. And that's essentially all the ingredients that you need for this. Okay. So I think you might have a new recipe out of this. I think so. It could be good. I might need it written out, but. I can do that. Yeah. You know, I email those things after the shows, so maybe I'll just pitch out my email list. Learning as I go. <laughs> um, so we're gonna let that sit. I'm gonna add the chicken. We've got a few more topics to discuss. We'll take a break and see you on the other side. Dining in? I'm hand cut for the occasion. Almost ready. These moments are rare, so enjoy them when you can. Sincerely, hand cut steak. Sincerely, Safeway. Okay, our chicken Florentine is almost done. What we're doing right now is letting that sauce thicken up and the chicken wasn't quite all the way cooked through. I just wanted to brown it. So it really is only gonna last a couple of more minutes, which is Perfect. just the right amount of time for virtual master chef. Virtual who? The most fun that you are gonna have today. <laughs> okay, virtual master chef is this. I'm gonna give you five ingredients and I just want you to tell me what you would make with these ingredients. Like, putting them all on the same plate, like in the same sort of dish, okay? <laughs> okay, here we go. Chicken, quinoa, cream cheese, the sweet spicy peppers, okay. you know, like the, you know what I'm talking about? Thank and spinach. You. What would you make with that? I mean, I'd probably just throw it all together and mix it some chicken quinoa bowl. <laughs> You could have gone. I mean, I don't think you have to make a dish out of it. You just get your quinoa and chicken and then you throw everything else on top. I, that's usually, that's why I, usually most of what I do, like is most of my cooking? dishes are just, yeah, it's probably rice or pasta on the bottom. And then I got some type of meat, some type of vegetable, and it's all just kind of bunched into one thing. Okay. Well, you could absolutely make a bowl with that. Here's what I was thinking. 
I was thinking... Some real dish, probably? No, I was thinking... <laughs> I mean, maybe. But it's all a real dish if you're gonna eat it. Mix the cream cheese and the sweet hot peppers together. Stuff it into the chicken, like a chicken breast, oh, like a stuffed chicken yeah, breast. Yeah, yeah. And then you can put that over quinoa and spinach. Okay. Or you could go crazy. You could toast the quinoa and use it to bread the chicken. I didn't know you could toast quinoa. Oh, Is like it? in the oven? Yeah. Oh, okay. As opposed to the toaster? I, that's kind of where my mind went first, <laughs> yeah. Those are just called breadcrumbs at that point. Those They're are good too. They're all going to the same place, so. It, it is true, but the thought of pouring quinoa into a toaster now just makes me laugh. <laughs> Um, our meal is just about done. The only thing we have left to do, plate it. Other universities didn't fit into my life. They said I'd have to quit my job to go to school. They said it would take me four years to graduate. They said I have to take tests when they tell me to. They said my degree would cost a fortune. But I didn't have to listen to them because I have a university that listens to me. Tests on your time, courses on your time, graduate on your time. WGU, the university of you. Hey there, it's me, Foo. Whenever you need me, uh, can I get that price? I'm ready for you. Especially when you're busy and you're always busy. But no matter what, we find time for this. So go ahead and enjoy the moment, because there's plenty to go around. Keep it easy, my friends. Sincerely, food. Sincerely, Safeway. And just like that, it's dinner and a snap. What do you think? Looks really I always good. feel like I should have my, it should have its moment on yeah, TV, you know? Absolutely. Does it have its moment? Okay. I think it looks, yeah, looks good. Okay, but it doesn't matter what I think. What actually matters is what you think. And if you think you can recreate this at home. It's good. I like the sauce. Nice job on those veggies. Hey. Yeah. Teamwork. Mm-hmm. And then a little bit of wine. Cuts through the cream a little. You could also do a Chardonnay, but. How do you know what wine pairs with what food? Sometimes you just have to drink a lot of wine. That's very true. I think that's the answer. I thought there was really like a science to it. There is. There's absolutely flavors a science and like to it. what? Yep. There's flavors. There is acidity. You don't want to add acid on acid. Gotcha. When you've got a big tannin. That yeah. Complement each other. Yeah. There's a reason that you have red wine with steak because the tannins cut through like the fattiness of the steak or gotcha. the richness of gotcha. the steak. I think this sounds like a next episode of I Cook, You Measure, all about wine. But did, did we do it? Oh, we had a couple of goals today. First of all, you didn't spill on yourself. <laughs> Secondly, I think you can recreate yeah. this meal. I, really I think don't. maybe if I did it all by myself, we're probably going to stain or two in there, but, yeah, but maybe as long as the dinner an apron too. Out. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Good. Well, cheers. Thank, thank you. you, my friend. Yeah, thanks for having me. Of course. Well, I think that we have had an enlightening conversation and of course, fun over food in the kitchen, but it is not possible for everybody in our community. It is the reminder that I give you after every episode. There are many families that struggle to have enough food on the table, which is why for every episode of I Cook You Measure, a donation is made to a nonprofit working to end food insecurity in our community. Thank you again to Brian Wu. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. It's not even three o'clock. Pretty good. I think I almost spilled in that video. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what felt, are you doing? I felt something. <laughs> oh my gosh. I Cook You Measure is presented by Safeway, who encourages you to step up for our high school student athletes through the Nourishing Champions program. The collaboration with Champions of Change provides funding for nutritious snacks and meals for all high school sports teams in need. Use the QR code to donate to Nourishing Champions and fuel success on and off the field.